Howdy folks, welcome to Montana. We're going to be doing the Empire Builder, the original Empire Builder. The passengers here at Shelby have just completed loading and your scheduled departure is 2.30pm, so prepare for departure. That we will do. We've got our beautiful Empire Builder train here. We won't spend too much time gawking at it because we need to get going. Alrighty. Release the brakes. Head forward, hit the light, bell, nice horn, and away we go, ladies and gentlemen. Conductor to train 31, high ball. Alright, so let's take a look at this bad boy. We've got an F7, an F7B, another F7B, B units being cabless and just extra power, and another A unit, pretty standard. We got a post office car, slash baggage. We've got what looks to be a dining car, a dome, another dome, another dome, and... Not really sure what this two medical lakes. Okay. Uh, some sort of either kitchen or transition car. And we got a sleeper, Blackfoot Glacier, Red Gap Pass, Sexton Glacier. These are all sleepers. And another dome, a super dome. Mini Glacier. And our final observation car with the. Uh, Empire Builder Drumhead. Look at that. That's pretty. You know what? I'm actually going to uh, pause right here. Get a nice screenshot. There we go. Beautiful. All right. So we are on our way. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and go full throttle. I've also got the uh, sound enhancement from... Listen to that. That is beautiful. I've got the sound enhancement from Central Jersey Railfan of 567. From trainsimcommunity.com. And oh my gosh. It blows the stock sound out of the water. This is a beautiful train set. So this is circa 1957. This is what the train set looked like in 1957. I can't help myself. I gotta get another screenshot. Oh, that is beautiful. I think there's a crossing coming up. But yeah, the Empire Builder was a... Uh... Alright, we're coming up on speed limit, so... Gonna lower it here. Now that was a bit of a sound glitch because of the sound set that's being used. Because it is the custom sound set. But yeah, this thing is absolutely beautiful. But the original Empire Builder, and there is a modern Empire Builder by Amtrak. But the original from Great Northern. I 
could have sworn there was a crossing at some point over here. But it ran between Portland, Oregon and Chicago, Illinois. So it was from Chicago to the West Coast. So if you wanted to if you wanted to go all the way across the country from coast to coast, say you were in uh, Boston, Massachusetts, and you wanted to go to Portland, Oregon, you'd have to take at least three or four trains just to get to where you need to go. All right, we got a hill coming up here. But yeah, they're still in service. The The name of the train is still the Empire Builder, as it was since day one, which is cool. Amtrak kept that. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they make a variation of the name. Or sometimes what'll happen is the railroad will combine trains that are going into a similar direction and change the name based on both trains. That didn't happen with the Empire Builder. It stayed the same name since the beginning. But it's a very it's a very scenic route. Much like something like the California Zephyr. Or the Broadway Limited or the 20th Century Limited. One of those big named passenger trains. However, there is a difference. Uh, I noticed recently there was a comment left on one of my other more modern Empire Builder videos saying they did not have a great experience with Amtrak's Empire Builder. And Unfortunately, the standard of service between Great Northern and Amtrak has significantly decreased. In no short part due to Amtrak being government run. You see, back in the day, railroads operated a lot like airlines in terms of passengers. They wanted you to travel with them. And if you traveled with them once, they wanted you to come back. You, they, they wanted to make your experience great. These were, these were luxury trains. Can't say the same for Amtrak's experience. But these were like rolling hotels, especially if they carried Pullman cars, because they had a standard of service with Pullman that was to be expected. Nowadays, not so much. The Pullman company is sadly no more, along with the Bud Company, two of America's greatest real car manufacturers both gone at least for passenger now it's Siemens and other European firms uh, I'm, I'm not going to get started on that because I'm just going to get angry love that horn I think it's supposed to be a Nathan M3 I knew they were crossing somewhere along here. Notch up a little bit. Because I want to make decent time here. Even though this isn't a career scenario, I want to try to be as punctual as possible. But yeah, unfortunately, Amtrak standard of service is nowhere near what it was in the 50s and 60s with Great Northern. Once it hit in the 70s, they had a lot of the Great Northern equipment, and a lot of stuff probably was similar, but as time went on, they got their own equipment. The government basically has a monopoly over passenger inner-city rail, and they don't have to hold their standards as high as they would like. I've made several suggestions to Amtrak over the years in terms of how they could improve their service, both visually and in terms of... The overall experience but obviously they're not going to listen to a social media suggestion by a lowly rail fan like myself I 
This is a three-part scenario. I'm going to try to do all three parts. I don't know, what is the total distance that I have to run? 62 miles, okay. Cut Bank Station in 17 miles is where I have to pick up some passengers. What's my speed here? 55, same for passenger as freight, that's different. Let's throttle up, we got ourselves a grade. So yeah, long story short, Amtrak only half knows what it's doing. Early on, Amtrak wasn't too bad from what I understand. In terms of the way that they, they really valued the customers of service, but now that they're the only game in town, even though they were when they started, they just don't seem to care, and they also have to wrestle with the Class 1 railroads that have all the lines they own west of New York. Because the only rail line that Amtrak owns, or the only two, I should say, well, actually, it is only one now, because uh, I think they sold off Philadelphia to Harrisburg. But they own the line from Boston to Washington, and then everything else in between that they travel on is owned by either CSX, Norfolk Southern, BNSF, Union Pacific, Canadian National, etc., etc., and none of those companies have an interest in passenger rail because they look at it the same way as their predecessors looked at it, which is, unfortunately, it's a losing proposition. It would just cost them way more money to operate a passenger rail service interstate than it would to operate freight. Now, I would argue that in the modern day, with fuel prices being what they are, there is an opportunity that they are being foolish to neglect. But there are also, there are also costs that they are legitimately concerned about. So I understand it from both perspectives, but I still think it's a mistake for them to not invest in interstate passenger rail because they could do a heck of a better job than Amtrak ever could. I've had this conversation with my father several times. He doesn't believe that at least in his lifetime, that we'll ever see the Class 1s go back to passenger rail. I believe it's possible. I really do. Coming up on a 79 mile an hour speed limit, so I can just leave her cranked. Which is great. But yeah, my, my father doesn't believe that it'll happen, and odds are it might not. It might be a couple years. They might consider it at some point if, if freight rev revenue gets low enough. It would still be a massive, multi-billion dollar investment. And then there would be the issue of station ownership. Because right now, Amtrak doesn't own the tracks, but the state and Amtrak, the feds, they own most of the passenger stations on these freight lines. So would the Class 1s purchase the stations from the government and maintain them, or would they just work out a deal with the government that if the government wants interstate rail travel, they have to maintain the stations? I think it would be a fair deal to let them run the stations, and then if it goes sour, try to renegotiate. But I don't know. I think there's ways it could be done. It was done before. I think it could be done again, but it would just take time. I think if they worked out a deal with Amtrak to where they get stuff ready and Amtrak takes passenger service until a certain year, then that would probably work out better. Wow, it's a car full of reefers.
Sorry, I had an itchy ear there. Hopefully nobody heard that. <laughs> this microphone is really good at picking up stuff. I'm recording this at 1 in the morning. I don't have work tomorrow. Tomorrow's my last day off of work, so... I can just sort of take it easy. But I figure I'll get as much of this done as I possibly can. Still a long ways to go. And again, this is only part one. This isn't even the second or third part. This is the, just the first part of the scenario. So I don't know how long this video is going to be. We're cooking now. We're doing 60 miles an hour. Just got to see if any more crossings are coming up. Because I want to do a... Uh, pass by camera. That is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And that's another thing is Amtrak tries with their paint schemes, but it's all some variation of red, white, and blue, or currently blue and silver, which I don't know who told them that blue and silver was a good idea, but it wasn't. I do like their new paint scheme, though. Phase 7 or 8? I think it's Phase 8. It's more strictly red, white, and blue. More blue and red. Kind of pops a little bit. But still... It's just frustrating to see what we had and what we don't anymore. And the fact that the government had to step in at all to save passenger rail is a bit sad. And they're mostly responsible for passenger rail declining like it was. I mean, in part it was the automobile, but they pushed for the interstate highway systems and they funded those. They didn't supplement the railroads at all. So, unfortunately, they started to lose money and by the 1970s, they had taken over passenger rail completely because it was just losing them so much money. And the class ones to this day still see it the same way as a money-losing proposition. But I would argue, in the modern day, with Lyft and Uber, you don't need to bring your car with you. It'd be a lot easier for travel. It'd be a lot safer, that's for sure. The accidents still happen. Unfortunately, there was a derailment just a couple weeks ago. Dump truck ran a crossing. I think it was the Zephyr. The California Zephyr. It was doing like 89 miles an hour. It was awful. But I mean, that sort of thing is going to happen from time to time, unfortunately. Same as it would in a car. But a lot of people survived that. A bunch of Boy Scouts on board that helped everybody out. Yeah, I'm actually losing speed here because uh, grade's getting steeper. This first section is mostly planes. I don't remember what what I did with my first Empire Builder video. The Amtrak one, the more modern one. Oh, this, this sound package is tremendous. And these things were loud. Make no mistake about it. They, these 5.6.7s cranked. They didn't have turbos. 
but they had a lot of raw power. Put some sand on, see if that makes any difference. No. Well, thankfully, I don't have to worry about going over the speed limit because I'm at notch 8 and... My speed is declining. I'm going to turn off the sand. It's really not necessary. It's just gravity. Passengers 60, freight 55. Just for this... I think this is an S-curve. I'm thinking about cutting ahead to our first station stop. I know I used to do that a lot. In fact, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'll see you guys when we hit our first station stop. Alright, welcome back, folks. We're coming up on our first, or technically, I guess, second station. Cut bank. Now, the only thing... about running this route in particular is it is very much out of era. I think somebody made a backdate mod for this route, and I haven't tried it yet, but, I mean, if you look carefully, we've got concrete ties. Those didn't exist in 1950... Which, which year was this? 1956? 1957. I was one year off. So, I tried my best to ignore it. It's the best they can do with what they got. And unfortunately, that's like a lot of scenarios in uh, in the simulator, unfortunately, with older content, is 
the track surface and some of the scenery is a little bit uh, modernized. I'm going way too slow here. That's going to definitely hurt my time. Oh, the engine sounds are so good. I'm going to gush over them all, all throughout, so be prepared for that. Some GP9s. Ready to get the train brake on. And the bell. And it would not surprise me in the slightest because this route is so modernized. if we see Amtrak signage on the station. Possibly not, but we'll see. Yep, there's some Amtrak signage. Unfortunate. This is fine, but... It's a little out of era, obviously. Let me try to line it up just right here. Cut bank station. Let's go a couple cars back. See what we can see. A couple of folks getting on. And yeah, unfortunately there is Amtrak signage. Amtrak rail passenger station. Nah, ain't that something. Wouldn't be for another fifteen or so years that we would see that. And that particular variant, not another thirty some years. All right. Here we go, folks. Sometimes it doesn't release on the first. You kind of just have to go up.
We'll get back in the cab here. We'll have a 35 mile an hour speed limit here soon. Rocking and rolling there. Yeah, we then we get single tracked over here for a little bit. Now ah, look at this bridge. Now that is pretty. In fact, once again, I'm going to attempt to get a screenshot. Look at that. get almost the length of the train. That is gorgeous. It's a little hard to see fully. It's a beautiful train. Some of the cars have still survived. All under private ownership. The ones that didn't survive were unfortunately scrapped, as is usually the case. That's the sad thing about railroad preservation. Stuff that isn't saved is cut up and made into silverware. Because that's what we need more of. I'm sorry, I'm getting mad again. <laughs> I'm such a preservation nut. I'm the most mad at New York Central because they, they only saved two of their more significant steam locomotives. Both of the Mohawks, the 482s. And that was almost completely by accident. Alright. Next station is going to be Browning. It's about 32 miles away. But yeah, New York Central's president at the time was like, yeah, steam's not important, we won't save it, we need the money, so we'll just cut them up and make them into forks. I think some of them ended up being sent to Japan. And they ended up making tanks. Something like that. Oh, said there's a crossing coming. Where is it? Now oh, there it is. I will say the crossings are period accurate because a lot of them don't have automated crossing belts. jerky there because of where I had it for the bridge. There's so many good shots that you can get. So many. That's a little weird because of the way the number boards are glitching. But that is cool. Yeah, 
The entire train set just matches completely, and it's not something you see much anymore. Boy, if those number board lights weren't so glitchy, it'd be a near-perfect photo there. Now, some railroads used F units for their passenger trains and ABBA sets. But a lot of them used E8s. Or E units. It was very rare to find ones that used F units. The Santa Fe did, Great Northern did. But roads like the Pennsylvania, New York Central... Erie, uh, Lackawanna Railroad, the Lackawanna Railroad, and eventually Erie, Erie Lackawanna, they used E units for their passenger trains. And the E units were basically stretched out F units with two engines on one chassis. They were big. Six axles. I don't know why I was thinking they were eight axles. But no, they're six they're big six axle locomotives. They look like a long F unit. Sometimes they had B units, but usually you just see two or three A units on a train. She so had six prime movers or six engines. on three chassis, because each chassis had two prime movers, two engines each. They were pretty impressive. I personally like F units better, especially in this uh, A, B, B, A configuration. It'd be about four engines. Pretty neat. Also, another indicator that this route is kind of... At least for this scenario... Out of date is... The light signals. I don't know how early the Great Northern had light signals. I would imagine by the 60s, but we're still in 57. So... Anyways, I'm going to cut ahead to the next station because I don't want this to get too long. It's already stretching out. So, I'll see you guys then. Yeah, welcome back, everyone. We are coming up on our final two objectives here. We're going to be stopping at Grizzly Main 1. Due to some track maintenance, I think the notification said. You guys didn't see that. But uh, I cut out a lot of the just redundant going over scenery. I'm actually recording this a couple days after my initial recording session. Just to get this part finished up. Hope you guys enjoyed this journey, though. It's been fun. And let me know if there's interest in a part two. It's starting to really bother me, though, that this route is out of era. I'm just starting to notice it more and more now that I've pointed it out. Alright, so Grizzly Main 1 is going to be coming up. And unfortunately, for some reason, when I resume the scenario, usually the mileage counts down to you're closer to it. It's not doing that. I don't know if that's a glitch or if that's just intentionally left out. I have not the slightest idea.
It is very strange. <coughs> Excuse me. It is very strange indeed. But I've enjoyed this little romp with the Empire Builder, the original Empire Builder. It is a beautiful train. Truly. They don't make them like that no more. No, sir. Not with that standard of beauty anymore. Amtrak could, if they really put the money and effort into it, but they won't. And that's a whole nother can of worms that I don't <laughs> necessarily want to get into right now. No, I don't want to save the progress. I accidentally hit the wrong key. Alright. So we'll be stopping at Grizzly Main 1. Which we are not too far from right here. I'm gonna start to throttle down a bit, and it looks like we're going downhill. And it also looks as though we've got a freight train headed our way. But yeah, the more I think about this route being out of date, the more it starts to bother me. And it really shouldn't. But it is, just because I'm weird like that. I'm seeing things that shouldn't exist in the 1950s. Certainly not 1957. Oh, it's a train of reefer cars. Must be fruit. Now we're starting to go downgrade. Get ready on the dynamic brakes, just in case. Going in complete idle. Let's see how far we are. Not very. Not very. And keep in mind, folks, this is the first scenario. We still have to go all the way to Whitefish. Which is in the second part. Or, no, not in the second part. It's in the, uh... I don't remember how many parts there are to this. I think there are at least three or four. So let me know if you want to see those in the future. I'm probably not going to record those right away, just because these have been very time-consuming. But, eventually I will get around to doing it if there's enough interest. I do want to do other things in between, though. Alright, we are coming up on it.
It's going to inch forward just a little bit. And that'll do it. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. All right, folks. That does part one. Nice little ride. We picked up some passengers, both Shelby and at Cut Bank. We'll be delayed here for a few moments until the work crew checks the line ahead. Take a quick break. Scenario complete. Sweet. All right. And I gave the author a thumbs up. This is a workshop scenario. All right, folks. Well, I will see you guys in the next video. Again, let me know down below if you'd be interested in more parts of this. And I will see you when that happens. If that happens. So, God bless. Have a good one. See you further down the line.